Um, apologies in advance. I hope I don't um you all to death. When I'm nervous, I say um a lot. So uh, hopefully I won't bludgeon you with ums. So today we are exploring ways to share your spiritual story. And as Dave said, we are in a series where people are sharing psalms, songs, and stories in a variety of different ways. And that is why I'm here. I'm just kind of part of that variety. And um, before I start, and before we pray, I want to talk about um, Rachel's song last Sunday, if you weren't here. Um, she came up and she sang her story, and it was beautiful. And um, the refrain had to do with not being on solid ground. And I was deliberating. I was meeting, going to be with, meet with Joe the next day to talk about what I was going to say. And I was deliberating if, if to kind of make myself ready to do this, um, that I talk about all the ways that I'm not on solid ground. And so I wrote an exhaustive list. <laughs> and after Rachel sang, I said, you know, it is right and good that I talk about how I am not all that. And, um, and that made me think, isn't that how we share our story? None of us are all that. And all, all of us have the exhaustive list. And it's not about being perfect. It's about doing it not perfect. And so I am not on solid ground today, but I would like to ask God to help me to be there where I need to be. There's three things I'd like to ask God to do for us today as we pray. Um, show us how we can share God's story in the way that we are uniquely wired and allow us to have that experience of sharing, help us and help others at the same time, that it would be like an exchange. So Lord Jesus, I pray that, that you would help us in this exchange, that you would help us understand our story, express our story and share our story in a way that gets us more on solid ground and others on more solid ground. I pray that if my words are not of you, that they would fall on deaf ears and that through your power today, I might share something that will help others and that will also help me. And together right now, we can enjoy that exchange. Amen. So today's question, what does sharing your God story in a way that is uniquely you look, look like? And actually that picture is wrong because it shows all the other flowers are the same and you are different. But it actually should be a picture of every possible color, right? Because that's what we would be. And you know, what does it look like to do this sharing? Connecting us with God, connecting others with God, connecting us with God, connecting others with God. And it just goes around and around and around. Definition of unique, being the only one of its kind, unlike anything else, special, unusual. That's how God would do it. He's creative. He made us creative. And that's why we can do this unique thing of sharing. And of course he wants us to share our experience, right? It's our testimony. It's what we're supposed to do. And what God has to say about our uniqueness. So Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. We are wonderful. I know that full well. And that brought me to Three thoughts. One, much care was taken in making us. Two, we are not clones. And three, not only do we have a unique story, but we have a unique way to share it. And I really think that the possibilities are endless. And sometimes people will really surprise us too. They'll be like, wow, I never thought of doing it in that way. Or I can't believe how that happened, like in spite of you. So I believe that leads us to a truth. We are uniquely wired to share, 
and we're going to do it and it's going to look different. And we are not just the red egg among everybody else that's the same, but we are all truly unique. Some ways that people are sharing at Crossroads right now, we've heard songs, we've heard psalms, we've heard stories, we've heard mini ser series, um, mini sermons, and it's not over yet. There's still more planned. And I'm um, sharing in groups and um, on our daily walk. That's just some of them. The sharing in groups one, um, that was a powerful one for me. For many years, I was a member of the codependency support group. It was during a particularly difficult time in my life. And when people shared at that table, they said stuff that resonated with me. I said stuff that resonated with them. And it was life-giving. And let me tell you, people at that table, they were, they were not in good places. They really needed to rely on their faith and their journey and their stories and each other in order to get through it. Now, your story won't look like mine, so the challenge is figure out what yours is going to look like, but perhaps my sharing will encourage you in some way. I've kind of shared in a, in a way that kind of you, you might not have considered, that you might not otherwise try, and so I'm going to kind of throw that out there, and maybe it'll spark something. Um, I'm going to give you three personal examples of how I've shared and then kind of break those down and after each example kind of give you a like a to-do list to try. So the first way that I shared was I shared my spiritual autobiography, my personal spiritual journey and it's not that everybody should do it this way. I just happen to self-publish a book. Um, anybody can do it. Um, it is um, virtually costless, which is not the way it used to be, and just a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. If I feel like God is leading you to try that, reach out and talk to me. I can kind of walk you through the process. Um, and, um, you know, if you've got the drive and desire, give it a shot. Because for me, occasionally, it's a tool that I can pull from. So I got a couple of copies of my bookshelf at home. You know, I run into somebody. It might be, you know, the cashier at the supermarket who shares something and I'm like, whoa, that person is, the, our lives have somewhere along the line really dovetailed. So I pull a copy, put a little note in it and say, you know, why I'm sharing and, and sometimes it ends up really making a difference and that's how it's cool and that's how we do it. So anyone can do it. Um, so I published this book called Dancing in the Doghouse. Um, there are a couple of copies out on the table in the hallway under the banner. If you're interested in checking out my process to see if it gives you any ideas, or if you are interested in trying, self-publishing, borrow a book, check it out, see if there's something in there for you. Because this is all about ideas, right? It's like all about getting ideas. Um, now there are other venues for sharing. You're going to do it in your way. Um, you know, I talked about Rachel's song and how that was her way of sharing, right? Her way that she's uniquely wired. Um, Bible study group. A group of people get together. Yeah, you're going to do some Bible study. But do you ever get out of a Bible study without hearing about somebody's challenge, somebody's praise, somebody's journey, right? And you're all holding hands, praying, supporting each other. That is sharing your story. And some people are really like, that's their wheelhouse. And that's a beautiful thing. So it's about how God wants you to share and when he wants you to do it. So I didn't start out with like a plan. Like I didn't wake up one morning and go, oh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write some journals and paint some pictures and put them all together and make a book. Um, in, fact, um, in fact, I was at that particular point in time when um, when I started um, keeping journals, I was at a particularly low and challenging point in my life. So I have a sleep disorder, which is now well managed. But if you go back um, to even when I was five, um, I was sleeping maybe three to five hours a night, waking up every 20 minutes, gasping for air, 
walked around with chronic headaches, nausea, sometimes my hands would shake. I mean, it was just really, and I had, I, and I had many blessings in my life, wonderful children, wonderful husband, you know, a beautiful home, safety, people who love me, a church family, you know, I had it all. However, you know, life throws stuff your way. And um, I was really, I was not doing well. And so I'm writing in these journals and I'm making art in response to what I'm writing in the journals because I'm an artist, that's how I express myself. And um, I don't have an intention or anything. In fact, I'm, I'm as far from let's write a book as you can imagine. I'm just getting through the day. And writing down my own story is helping me get through that. And I'm following this impulse to just like write and create. And then God m magically helps me kind of pull it all together. And along the way, a conversation in my journal started. So this is where we lead to like something that you could try, okay? So in my, um, in my uh, oh, actually, I don't want to go back on this for a second. So that picture that I painted um, at that time is not a field of flowers. You can see the darkness and the light, right? You can tell that that was made by a person struggling with faith, both. That's how we share, right? I could have made something that everybody would be much more comfortable with and put that up there. Oh, yay, beautiful, right? Yeah, but that was, my, that was the truth about my story at that time. And so this is a page from my book about how this conversation between God and I started as I'm in this like dark place. And I wrote, I keep a journal. Inside it, I've started writing down my conversations with God. I've always had voices in my head. One of the voices is encouraging. I used to call that voice my gut or my voice. I put God's words in parentheses when I'm journaling. The parentheses let me go back in my journal and think about what I've heard God say. So. I'm asking you to consider this conversation, and I actually want to like digress for a minute because I'm like thinking this. Um, as a 51-year-old woman, what I do better than I did when I was 12 was hear that voice. Like we hear it all day long, and if you try this process, like for me, it helped me like fine-tune that and trust that voice a lot more, and really separate out was that my own thinking or was that was that God? You know what? You know, what is that? So, so um, this is what the conversation looked like for me. Um, again, a page from my book where I write a letter to Jesus and I just separate out my words and the words that I'm hearing Jesus say back to me. So I say, dear Jesus, my life amounts to nothing. My hope barely remains. I don't understand you. Why have you let me reach this terrible place? I have good reasons for the way things happen, God says. Everything will be used for my good purposes in the end. Let that be your hope that remains. Jesus, let these words be true. Let this really be you. And, and Jesus says back, I have so much for you. You will come into the fullness that I have just for you. I'm afraid of failing. I'm afraid of failing you. You can't fail with me, Elisa. Imagine your story. Your life lived is the truth about the battle. You show the world that the battle can be won. You will be living proof that the battle is won in me. Which is like, was ludicrous to me at the time because I was losing the battle. It's hard to believe. You will see that it is true. I will make it so. All my hope that remains, remains in you, Elisa. So this gave me like a new approach to getting my story down. And at that point in time, I needed it. Later on came, how can it help somebody else? So be open to sharing your thoughts and words. Consider writing your story down in a new way. Um, consider separating out, those voice, uh, separating out those voices, you know, maybe and highlight the portions where you kind of hear, this is what God is saying to me, you know and keep that separate from what kind of you feel like is going on in your own head. See if you can turn that into an exchange, and then really just pray and explore the ways that um, that, that might be a way for you to share with others at some point in time. 
Now, my second example for how I have shared my story is through my creative process. And creative process is really, really broad. You know, a lot of times we hear a creative process, we sit here like sing, dance, you know, draw pictures, right? Um, think about the worship team, right? It's, it's, it's not just when they're singing a story about their lives, but they've done that recently, right? And that's moved all of us. But it's also just that it's how, they, it's how they express their faith, and that is part of their story. When they come up there and they do that for us, they're doing it. They're sharing in the moment as God is asking them to do it. Stories of baptisms, like who in the room hasn't been moved by something that somebody has said, right? People, hands shaking, sweating, coming to the front of the room, terrified, but they know that in that moment, God is asking them to say how they got to the point that they committed their life to Christ, right? And all those stories are right there. Amazing and creative ways to share. Um, for me, I, I recently was, you know, journaling again and, and, and making art in response to it. And I, I, I made another book, it's called Mindfulness Painting, it's a, Paintings, excuse me, and it's about my, my creative process and my spiritual process and my walk with God and how those kind of dovetail. Have it on a shelf every once in a while, pull a copy, share it with somebody, and it's helpful, and that's an awesome thing. And that's how we all do it. Maybe you don't have a book on a shelf, but you've got something, right, you know? I mentioned you early, I don't know, earlier, I don't know if your ears were burning, but, you know, Sherry is like, have you ever seen her prepare a Bible study? I was like in the library one day, and the process that she goes through to lay that out is creative, because how do you make people understand and bring alive a piece of scripture, right? You know, and I don't know if you remember, Deb, this is going back like, many, many years, and we were in a Bible study in the, in, the, in the farmhouse, and I was sitting next to you, and I was a wreck, and I was bawling, and she hugged me and told me it was going to be okay, and I don't remember what you shared about your life, but, like, I mean, I will never forget it. I'll never forget it. Um, so you're going to find your spiritual and your creative process and how you live and breathe and walk your faith. And again, there's a copy of this out there. If you're interested, you want to check it out, um, you have any questions, um, you know, there's lots of new ways that you can kind of share, you know, and there's like all the whole social media thing too, that that's like a, that's like a whole nother ball of rat wax. I'm not even going to go there other than to say it can be good and it can be a great place to share. It can also be a really bad idea. <laughs> so. With that said, this is an excerpt from my Mindfulness Paintings book, and it shows how I shared through my creative process. And to people who are like artsy types like me, this is often helpful for somebody. Or maybe God's calling you to explore that part of yourself, and you've always said, no, I don't have that talent or skill, you know, who knows? Um, so this is titled Quiet Place, and it says, for someone whose mind is almost never quiet, it is profound that I have a quiet place. Give me some paint, and I am suddenly a person who can think about only one thing at a time. I don't stress or ruminate in this quiet place. Thoughts come and go. I sort things out. I notice feelings, and I let myself feel without fear. I become gentler to myself. I settle down inside. It's no wonder I keep coming back to paint. Today I am thinking about something I am noticing about myself. I've lost my, ex my ability to experience a wide range of feelings. I'm more flat than I used to be. I'm steady. This can be good, but it's not always good. My spir spiritual experience, how I experience God is flatter, t flatter too. I'm bothered by this because I used to have such an easy time feeling God. Now I know he's there, and I hear his voice all day long, but I don't always feel him. In my quiet place, I can think about this and make some sense of it. I neither run away or act in fear and worry. I just notice this new truth about me. I think it's just a new experience of God. He's quiet. I'm quiet. We're just hanging out. 
in this new quiet place. I choose some colors, textures, shapes, and objects, and I move them around on my canvas, and I see, I see that they communicate the quiet I feel inside. I paint this new and quiet place, and it's okay. So this was a process for me where I'm working out, like, how my experience has changed over time. And I'm realizing that when you go from can't sleep to sleep, your range of emotions changes. So when you're exhausted, everything is up and down, and you're on those far ends, right? And then when you're, when you're calmer and more centered, sometimes you're not able to kind of, like, have those extremes. And um, maybe there's somebody else who's had the same experience. Maybe me sharing that says something to you, right? And don't we all feel that sometimes, those, those moments on our journey where, where we kind of feel like God is far away in some ways? Um, but it's all about it being just right for just the right person at just the right time. It doesn't have to be for everyone. So think about how to share your spiritual process as you're creating something. And think broad on creating something. Like um, something that comes to mind to me is writing somebody a letter. Like I was just thinking outside of the box. What could be something that I or you could try that would be something that we wouldn't standardly do? So you have a friend. They're going through something. They're on your heart. You know that your story and their story, they, they are... They are mingled somehow, and so you pick up a pen and you, you share your heart, you, you share what you're praying for them. Um, maybe you're a card maker and you make a beautiful card. Maybe you're a photographer and you slide something in there that you think is going to be an inspiration. Maybe you're just really good with words and you just use that creative ability to, you know, to connect with this person and you stick it in the mail. And how many of us wouldn't want to get that letter, right? You know, to have somebody notice where we're at and then respond and say, I'm right there with you. So there are all kinds of forms of creativity that can speak to our story. So be open to sharing what you create. Try making something or doing something new and jot down what you notice and feel and then pray about ways to share what you, have, what you have done and pray about where that's leading you. All right. My last example is sharing on your daily walk. And this is like, we're doing this all the time, right? Things unfold in the moment. Sometimes God is calling you to do something and you're doing it and you don't even know you're doing it, right? And um, so I'm going to give an example of when I shared in the moment. So recently, my mother passed away, and it provided an unexpected, very unexpected sharing opportunity. So what I want to do is provide a context for what I shared, and then I want to actually show you what I shared. So the context is, is that my mother, maybe 30 years ago, lived a vibrant life, and she loved life, loved family, loved me, and she was so dynamic charismatic and because of mental illness and physical illness she slipped away over time and um, when my mom had died you know like me and my my three siblings were all grappling with this and it's time to prepare her memorial service and uh, we don't we have, we decide we're not gonna have a pastor officiate in fact we're not gonna have anybody officiate we're just gonna each go up there and we're gonna share something you know, and then I ended up calling Joe and being like, I can't completely do this this way. We need a little more organization, and he helped me out. So Joe was there in spirit. But anyway, and part of this, this you know, decision is that me and my siblings don't share the same spiritual beliefs. For as long as I have been a Christian, I have been praying for my mother because she wasn't a spiritual person, and she had a lot of conflict and a lot of issues. And so... Me praying for her all those years is part of my story. And her memorial service not just being about a list of her accomplishments and, oh, she was a nice lady, that was not my story. That's not how I experienced my mother, right? All four of us are going to go up there, and we're going to share our story. It's going to look different. 
And somebody, when each person speaks, it's going to mean something to somebody in the room, right? So, so we're writing down what we're going to share. And my brother calls my sister Linda and I up, and he says, I want to read you guys what I shared. You can give me some feedback. And we're like, Gerald, that was so awesome. You did such a good job. Will you send us a copy? You know, and he really, he captured something really beautiful about our mother. We were really moved, and it was a beautiful thing. So Gerald gets off the phone, and I pick up my, my computer, and I spend several hours, like, figuring out what I'm going to say, and my sister's hanging out in the room with me. And I'm like, I read it to her, and my sister looks at me, and she says, that was terrible and nothing else. And so I found out later what she meant by that was, I never had that kind of relationship with mom. It was terrible for me to hear that you were able to connect with her and have that closeness, which I never had. But now I don't know that. All I have now is this feeling of panic about going up there and sharing, right? in the way that is me and the way I feel like God is leading to me. There's all these important things like I want to share. Like if I don't step up to the plate and mention the spirituality aspect of my mother's life, I'm letting them, the, my heart for her, right? I'm letting her memorial service come and go and be nothing but, you know, a series of, of steps that we took. And, and, and I needed to be brave enough to have it be more, but I'm now in panic mode. Is everybody in the room, when I share this, going to look at me and say, that was terrible, right? You know, so not compromising my story at this point is a huge, huge risk. So I'm going to read you what I shared. It's, it's a little long, but um, it makes an important point in ter terms of what I'm trying to communicate, so I'm going to do it. So you're going to see it in two parts. The first part is what I call the easy part. And then the next slide was the one that was more challenging for me. So I, you know, so I stand up the memorial service, room full of people, and I say, we are all per imperfect people. Moms, myself being one, are always a mixed bag. My mom faced challenges, and those who knew her well are well acquainted with them. I want to talk about something my mom did for me in spite of those challenges. I am an artist, and mom was the one who steered me towards becoming one. She saw something in me, and she made sure that I saw it too. I always had art supplies, even when the fridge didn't have any milk. I always got a word of encouragement about a painting I was making, even when she wasn't feeling encouraged herself. Sometimes I got a bit of a critique, which could be challenging, but underneath it all was the understanding that mom saw something in me that set me apart. I will be an artist for as long as life lets me, and painting brings me pure, cho pure joy. What a gift. One thing I can count on when I make my next painting is hearing my mother's voice saying, Elisa, you are special, and I see it. Thank you, Mom, for giving me that voice. I may cry. It has been a long road, and many of us have had a hard time remembering the early Chrissy instead of the Chrissy that age and time has slowly taken away. I have really struggled with the gradual loss as well as the health challenges that my mother faced throughout her life, so I hold tightly to what I am about to say. There is a biblical belief that when you die, you get a crown of beauty for ashes. I believe very strongly that this is true for my mother. She is no longer early Chrissy or late Chrissy. She is new Chrissy, right? And as Christians, we know what that means. No more ashes for my mother, only beauty. This is what I see. Mom is in heaven decorating her new home in her unique style. There is a tennis court in the backyard. Love to play tennis. And a pair of skis are in the closet prepped to be used. The side porch is filled with wine and cheese in the presence of my dad. See, these are all the things my mother did 30 years ago, not 25 years ago, you know. So they were important because they were her living life. Um, Mom and dad are planning their, you know, the side porch is filled with wine and cheese in the presence of my dad, and mom and dad are planning their next exciting vacation. In a few hours, they will leave to play tennis with their closest friends, spend time on the porch talking and laughing, and then go to dinner with all the loved ones who have passed before them. 
God is in them and all around them. And for my mom today, all things are new. It was my chance to tell my story, to make it more than a list of accomplishments and niceties, to not have the thing end and not have mentioned heaven or God, right? Because I prayed and in faith I believe that that prayer was answered. It's part of my mom's story because through my faith I know it's true. Um, fear and cowardice and people pleasing could have stopped me from doing it. I could have just had the first slide and not the second one. And there was an incredible temptation to leave that second part out. But then I would have shared a story that wasn't actually mine. It would have been somebody else's. It was my turn to speak and I took it. And um, she loved life, she loved deeply, she loved others. And right now she's doing it all with God and that's my story. So be open to sharing in the moment, right? I wasn't looking for that, trust me. Think about what God is asking you to share as you walk through your day. Be open to sharing with others in the moment and consider that this is the most often the most powerful way that we can share. So we're going to end with Crossroads sings a psalm, a song, or a story, an opportunity to start sharing. So out in the hallway is this banner and already we have some psalms, songs, and stories on there. There are like leaves and people have shared stuff and then I write the words on the leaves and put them up there and what we're, we're working towards creating is um, a, a community piece that speaks of all our stories all at once as a, as a community of Christ followers here at, at Crossroads. So how can you participate? Submit your psalm, song, or story to Joe or Dave or me. And remember the one word story? Maybe God's calling you to submit one word. It doesn't have to be. Maybe you just have a list of things, words that define your faith walk right now. Faith, trust, hope can go right on there. I'm hoping for at least 20 participants. So maybe what can nudge you is just... Uh, making me happy. Um, and um, if it's long, we might have to, you know, condense things and move things around if we get a lot of responses, but we'll see how all of that goes. That's just the nuts and bolts. So the question is, pray about sharing your psalm, song, or story. Is God calling you to do it? Are you part of this plan? Now, I was going to share examples, but I'm going to go over time, so I'm not going to do it. What's up here are the things that are already on the banner. There are three people that have shared. If you want to see what they shared, you can just walk out there and read it. So the words that are up there are on the leaves. Again, with this one and this one. And that gets us to you, to us too. Is God asking you to help Crossroads sing a psalm, a song, or a story? And what does that look like for you? Even if it's that you're the person who talks to people over by the coffee pot, shares your day, listens to somebody else's day, gives them a hug and some hope and encouragement as you share your journeys. That simple it can be. All right, and then I don't even think I need the slides anymore. Okay, so back to today's question. What does it look like for you? How are you going to do it? And... Remember, we're in this series, so there's going to be more. So when you come on Sunday morning, you know, just have your ears open and ready and just be praying about what it looks like for you to be fearfully and wonderfully made and to go out there and share your story. Thank you.